Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, the Show notes for every episode has a subscribe heading, and there's a variety of ways to, to uh, subscribe to the show. You can subscribe to Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed, or you can watch us on YouTube, Daily Motion, Blip.tv, Stitcher.com. Uh, you can get us on the digital radio there. Um, so uh, do check us out uh, in the various avenues. And uh, I'd like to encourage everybody, you can also shoot me an email, geekinator at quicksurf.com. It's Friday night, May 3rd, and instead of uh, being at the movie theater taking in Iron Man 3, I am here delivering another episode of the Geekinator. With that being said, uh, for those of you who are watching this, it's unlikely that I will make it to see Iron Man 3 this weekend, if at all. The earliest I could probably do it, because my Saturday is already pretty booked up, uh, the earliest I could possibly do it is maybe Sunday afternoon. Um, otherwise, it'll have to be some evening uh, in, in, during the week. So if anybody is in the North Bay area that is seeing this episode and wants to go see Iron Man 3 with me, uh, shoot me an email, geeknator at quickstruff.com. We can try to uh, arrange a meetup. Um, I live in Petaluma, but I'm willing to go as far south as Larkspur, Corte Madera, you know, right around in that area, San Rafael, um, and as far north as Santa Rosa, uh, if anybody wants to meet up. So with that being said, you know, that's all like, you know, 30 minute driving distance. It's not, not that big of a deal. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's, uh, go ahead and get into the cool stuff that I found for this episode over at Mashable. 10 Life Lessons from Star Wars. This is a pretty neat uh, story. You know, everyone always assumes, you know, Star Wars is just a, you know, nice popcorn type movie, but there's actually a lot of life lessons. And so they have this poster here um, that's got a bunch of stuff. Uh, snuggle like you don't need the credit or smuggle like you don't need the credits sticks and stones may break my bones but jedi mind tricks will never hurt me live every day like you're on alderaan <laughs> think outside the carbonite freezing chamber uh, take pride in your friends keep your droids shined it takes a village of ewoks to destroy an empire um, it, if at first you don't succeed do or do not there is no try <laughs> Life is what happens when you're busy dealing, stealing Death Star plans. There's, you know, pretty cool. You know, definitely check it out. I thought it was cute and would share it with everybody here. Totally, uh, you know, for the geek mind, obviously. Uh, over at GearLive.com, which, by the way, GearLive is also a member of the Tech Podcast Network. Uh, GearLive, Mac OS 10.9, is rumored to include a tabbed finder, Siri Maps, Siri, Maps, and more. So at the Worldwide Developers Conference in 2013, Apple is set to show off OS 10.9, which, believe it or not, for this year, I couldn't have gone even if I wanted to, even though it is just, you know, 45 minutes south of me. uh, They sold out in less than two minutes this year, which is obscene, if you ask me. I mean, this is, you know, pretty popular event. Uh, So, you know, maybe potentially we'll be looking to see a tabbed finder, an iOS style multitasking um, that will allow background apps to pause. That'd be actually kind of nice. Freeing system resources up for the apps that you're using at the time. Um, You know, there's, you know, a fair amount of uh, good power user-ish type changes uh, that Apple is purportedly including in 10.9. So pretty interesting. I'm curious to see. I'm I'm using 10.8. I recently uh, bought a new Mac uh, late last year, uh, and that's what the Mac that I use for my video editing. Even though the vast majority of my computing happens on my iPhone or iPad, you still have to have, you know, a desktop-ish, even though it's a laptop, a desktop-ish computer to do things like video editing, 
content creation, HTML, programming, that sort of thing. So anyway, long story short, over at uh, MakeZine in their blog, there's a six-headed GBC module. This is pretty neat. It's a YouTube video. Uh, Lego robotics engineer Aikuyiki is rightly famed for his amazing great ball contraptions, otherwise known as GBCs, including the 617 module arrangement he has in his home. One of his latest modules made out of Lego, mind you, is this great six-headed hydra that snags balls and delivers them to the next stage. Um, There's a YouTube video of this thing. It's pretty awesome. Definitely check it out, especially if you're into great ball contraptions. From readwrite.com in their hack section, there's a story here that caught my attention. This is what the next generation of programmers look like, looks like. They have a picture here, and it is a picture of a bunch of girls. That's right. The next killer app just might be developed by a girl still in high school. I cannot tell you how much I wish this would happen. I am so used to, for the last 15 plus years working in computers, um, the vast majority of my colleagues and coworkers, with the exception of managers, have been men. And even in the manager space, most of them have been men. Um, I've only had a couple of female managers in my entire career. Uh, the vast, like I said, the vast majority of them have been guys. And as far as like programming and IT type stuff, there's almost no girls, no women. It's almost all guys. It would be great if, you know, this would happen and we would start to see more women in technical fields. Pretty neat. Anyway, meet Kira Becker, Emily Moschella, Tara Abrashami. I'm sorry if I slaughtered your name, your name there, Tara. Anna Venetier, again, I'm sorry if I slaughtered your last name. Not one of them is older than 16, but they're already accomplished programmers. That's awesome. The four have spent the past five months developing Navicar since they attend the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, a magnet school that attracts gifted students from all over the Washington, D.C. area, and their uh, commutes are often lengthy. The girls all have active after-school lives, including tennis, track and field, and theater, but it's not always easy to get where they need to be. So uh, they're building apps. Navicar is this one that it, it, you know, kind of serves their needs, but that's good. You know, some of the best code I've written in my career was to solve a personal itch or a personal problem that I was having and I, and I needed to write some code and, and I, I did it and it ended up being, you know, some of the most elegant, sophisticated code that I've ever written in my life. And that's how it works. You know, you, you almost never write code if it's for somebody else and you're solving somebody else's problem, you know, I, I do generally do a good job and put out quality code, but some of the, my best code has been for my own personal projects or stuff that I really cared about. And, uh, you know, this is great. So, you know, I, I, I hope that we see more of this from Ars Technica in the technology lab in their uh, slash information technology section, an Arduino-based robot for people who don't know how to build robots. What? Yes. There are plenty of Arduino-based robots in the world, but actually building one is a bit tough if you're not familiar with Arduino programming. This is true. You do need to be familiar with how to program an Arduino. But a company called Arcbotics has created an Arduino-based robot called Sparky that can be used and programmed by anyone. You don't have to assemble it yourself. The little plastic plastic robot will be ready to go out of the box with an included remote control to let users create additional functionality. Arcbotics is preparing programming samples and tutorials for controlling the robot's sensors and actuators. Now, truth be told, an Arduino is a lot easier to get started with than a lot of other embedded development and environments. You know, I bought an Arduino kit right here in the not too distant past and uh, I was up and running and had code running on it uh, in probably 10-15 minutes it was really super easy really super simple 
um, you know, the in the Arduino uh, development environment, your code is, is it's very C like. So if you're familiar with C programming or C++ programming, it's pretty easy to uh, to get moving with it. Um, pretty neat. So anyway, definitely check this out, especially if you want to get into this sort of thing. From likecool.com, I thought this was awesome. I'm a huge Transformers fan. You know, I know you know a lot of people are kind of detractors of the Transformers movies, but they're they're pretty popular. They've done really well. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep making them. Uh, incredible homemade Transformers costume. This is a DIY Transformers costume. It is so over the top and so awesome. It's obscene. It's it is. You have to see the picture of this. Go check it out. That's all I'm going to say. It's pretty sick. And I don't mean sick as in bad. I mean sick as in that is epic. <sighs> yeah. From makezine.com and their blog, they have a post here, component of the month, op amps. I thought this was great. Uh, for those of you who want to know how operational amplifiers or op amps work, this is a great how they work uh, story. Uh, they have a nice little YouTube video that gives a great explanation. Um, definitely check it out, especially if you've never had any experience with op amps or you're curious how they work. Pretty good stuff. From the New York Times in their home and garden section, which is kind of a weird place for this to be, but there it is. Uh, the rise of the hackerspace is the title of this article. Um, pretty interesting read. You know, I thought it was interesting, thought I would share it with you guys. Basically it's about the rise of the hackerspace where people have, you know, an itch to do stuff like, you know, myself, I have an itch to do stuff. I'd love it if there were, you know, an easily, I'm sure there is, I haven't looked, but like in the Metro Phoenix area where I just moved from, there was a, not a lot of hacker spaces despite the fact that it was a huge spread out area there were only a couple of hacker spaces and they were you know from where i lived in central phoenix they were a long drive away you know they were more out in the suburbs where most of the people lived and uh this is about you know the rise of the hacker spaces where you have people where they don't have the space at home or the resources at home to to have a workshop but they want some place to do work and so the hacker spaces serve that function Pretty neat. Definitely check it out. From Uber Gizmo, one of my favorite uh, Gizmo and gadget sites. There's this uh, story here. It's a little bit older, but I still thought I'd uh, point it out to everybody. Graphene speaker surpasses the performance of a conventional, ooh, excuse me, conventional speaker. Graphene is a very strong, thin, and light material used in various applications, such as integrated circuits, solar cells, and ultracapacitors. Composed of pure carbon, the atoms are arranged in a regular hexagonal pattern in sheet form, similar to graphene, with thickness of one atom. According to Nokia, graphene is 300 times stronger than steel. Pretty neat. Due to its thin, light, and strong nature, researchers, researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, uh, Quinn Zhu and Alex Zetti, found graphene to be the ideal material for constructing speaker diaphragms. Now, this also makes me wonder... The story is primarily about speaker diaphragms, but this also makes me wonder if graphene would make an ideal microphone diaphragm for a microphone pickup. Curious. You know, a lot of condenser mics, uh, especially a little on the lower end, they use mylar or some form of that as, as a microphone uh, pickup, uh, you know, the diaphragm for the pickup. A lot of dynamic mics, not so much, but still... Um, pretty neat. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, I uh, thought it was an interesting read and sh thought I'd share it with you guys and gals for those of you who are girls. Uh, that will do it for this episode of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do uh, subscribe to the show. And with that, I will see you all on the next episode. If anybody in the Bay Area wants to go see uh, Iron Man 3, either Sunday afternoon or some evening uh, this uh, next week, shoot me an email, geekinator at quicksurf.com. And with that, I'll see you then. Bye.